Hello, everyone. Hi there. Hi, Cassandra. Hello. So uh, I think we are online now, and uh, uh, we'll just uh, we'll just uh, start in a couple of seconds. Okay, um, hello people. Uh, okay, I'll just uh, quickly introduce myself. Uh, thank you for coming on the webinar, uh, first of all. I'll just share my screen. Yeah. So, yes. Uh, automating sales for SMEs through chatbots. Uh, thank you for coming on the webinar. Right. Uh, I'm Divya and I uh, work as a product manager and I also look at product marketing uh, at Gupshop. Uh, I've been with Gupshop for the last eight years now. Uh, I also look into key accounts uh, for the bot platform. Um, I, I have a marketing background, although I started my career in Gupshop with, uh, you know, as a content writer. So yeah, it's strange I'm here now. Um, well, um, so uh, let's, uh, you know, start with the topic now. Um, so chatbots and big brands. Right. Whenever we think of chatbots, here are a few names. Every time we, uh, you know, come across all the big players uh, like Microsoft and Google, and then uh, there are these, you know, uh, big channels like Facebook, Line, Skype. Right. So uh, we all know. Everyone knows. You know uh, what uh, massive efforts FB Messenger has been. Uh, putting in to promote chatbots and uh, you know same as with Amazon uh, although Amazon uh, places its uh, bet on voice right so companies are investing in chatbots because uh, obviously they they uh, they realize that uh, the technology has started to reach a usable level of maturity and uh, the customers are following uh, you know this technology so everyone's doing something in the field of AI or bots. And obviously there are big brands. Uh, these were the early adopters of chatbots, right? Like Walmart and Disney and uh, Domino's, etc. obviously, right? So it works for big companies, definitely. Uh, but do chatbots work for SMEs, uh, right? So yeah, the perception is that yeah, no advanced technology is always for big business, big businesses. Uh, but uh, you know, if you talk about apps, you know, apps were rare. Only big companies made it. Uh, you know, maybe only big brands. But it's not the case now, right? It was like a decade ago. Now everyone's making apps. So same is with uh, you know chatbots. Uh, in fact, messaging users are increasing every day, right? And, uh, you know, globally, the world is moving towards a massive uh, broad adoption of uh, this technology. So chat chatbots definitely have a great potential even for SMEs, um, right? Um, so people are using chatbots, you know, even for simple things like sharing music or ordering food uh, just through chat or splitting bills maybe, right? So um, I feel that small medium enterprises are always you know, a step ahead in uh, adopting latest technology. Uh, and uh, in fact, they change the landscape when it comes to global business, uh, be it any sector. 
right? So, in fact, uh, let me give you this example. Uh, there was this teenager who made a simple lawyer chatbot. Uh, it's called Do Not Pay. Uh, and all that this bot does is, you know, it, you can chat to this bot. And uh, so people in specific cities like London and New York, uh, they can contest their parking tickets. Like, you know, if they feel, oh, it's, uh, I, I, it was unfair to give me a parking ticket for something for some reason, then I could contest it. And uh, people chatted with it and they reported uh, around 250,000 cases and 60% uh, of uh, those were successfully resolved actually, right? So uh, I know, you know, all SMEs have these questions in mind, like can a chatbot help me grow my business? Can it uh, obviously outperform the other marketing uh, uh, campaigns I'm doing? And is it easy to make a chatbot really? So we'll, we'll uh, come uh, across these questions. We'll answer these questions in today's um, seminar, right? So, so let me tell you, chatbots are definitely, first thing first, chatbots are not just for big businesses because mainly they are easy to set up, uh, right? Uh, if you have a simple use case and you know what kind of repetitive queries do you, do you get, Right, it's uh, it's simple to make a chatbot. Uh, you can uh, compile, uh, you know, simple uh, data through chatbots. You can capture leads, uh, which a majority of SMEs are doing these days through chatbots. Um, right, and uh, obviously virtual support is there's a growing demand for it. You know, no one, tr I mean, there's lesser number of people. Uh, calling up on call centers they don't like to do that you know people like texting it's the millennial generation right and that also cuts down on uh, the smes customer support resources and it's obviously inexpensive to develop if you know if you're looking for a simple uh, bot right so okay, my next my next uh, example, and rather I have a special guest after this, uh, is uh, Robin. Um, so Robin is uh, you know uh, the concept is based on conversational commerce, uh, right? I'll I'll show you a few clips and then you guys will get an idea of what I'm talking about here. So Robin is obviously a bot uh, available on various channels. It's uh, it's a, it's like a personal assistant. You can uh, place your orders. You can track your orders from here. You can make quick payments, and uh, you know simply by chatting with the bot. And it also allows you know the Robin team to share uh, you know various kinds of media uh, with their uh, with their uh, users and keep them engaged. Right. I'll just uh, play a video for it. Yeah. So, first of all, uh, you know, it, it has uh, this uh, feature of language, right? Uh, Robin comes from uh, Norway. So, obviously, there was a need to, you know, to to support Norwegian uh, in the uh, bot. So we, we provide two kinds of languages. The Robin team decided to have two uh, languages in that, uh, English and Norwegian, right? So you can choose which language you want, and then you can go ahead, right? And you can get started with the bot. Uh, obviously, uh, I don't understand Norwegian either. So let's move to English here. Now, this is what the Robin bot uh, offers. It offers takeaway, fashion services, services like, uh, you know, uh, maids and babysitters, and you can do tickets and stuff uh, from here, and then you can order groceries, right? So, uh, yeah, let's see, you know, I just, if I just type in, I want clothes, what does it say? So it takes me to the uh, you know, it takes me a level deeper and tells me, okay, you want clothes, what kind of clothes for men, for women, for kids, whatever. And then I can 
go even deeper and I can see the menu. Right, I can select and select the merchandise I'm looking for and get more details, just like any other e-commerce, uh, uh, e-commerce, uh, you know, a website or something. Uh, but while chatting, uh, the the second part is uh, obviously, you know, on uh, small talk. Now, you know, there are many users, you know, who are who like to play around or fidget around with the bot a lot, with any chat bot a lot, like, you know, asking random questions and stuff. So obviously, you know, we've put some bit of uh, small talk here, we call it small talk, um, right? Something like this, who are you and where are you from, etc. And some important stuff like how fast can you deliver, it says, and you know, uh, there, uh, Again, so there are users who like to fidget around. So you need to let them know that, OK, I am a chatbot. Step back because I cannot answer everything that uh, that you ask me. So you know, this is something that uh, any business owner uh, needs to keep in mind that, OK, the, the bot is definitely not going to understand everything that the user is going to say. User is going to say. So you need to have a fallback mechanism for it. I know. Simple one for for that matter. Can you do that faster? So obviously uh, the bot did understand that uh, because it was trained to do that. Uh, uh, so it gave the fallback answer. Sorry, I'm young and still learning. I may not understand all that you say. And there you go. So uh, suppose you know the user chooses to browse ahead, right? And there's some bit more of small talk the user could do, right? So you could put, you know, some bits of funny elements there, and so that uh, you know, it, it's uh, it's not it, the chatbot's not, not just a serious serious thing. So there are these keywords, you know, simple like menu and hi, hello, which start the bot or take you to the main menu always. So you need to train, you know, simple keywords like this also. So again, gift assistant. So gift assistant in Robin is essentially is, you know, it understands what your requirement really is. It will ask you a lot of questions. What is the location? What is the relationship? What is the budget, etc.? And once you tell it completely, uh, it will tell you, you know, what kind of gifts would you could you gift uh, the person? So it's like a gift assistant, right? Yeah. Uh, and then obviously there are uh, automated payments here. Right, say suppose I select a flower or bouquet and I want to get it delivered to someone, I can click on buy now and just, you know, simply put up uh, the phone number and delivery address and etc. etc. And it'll ask me some details, just like just like filling up a form, right? But uh, you can do that and uh, quickly get uh, going. Okay. Select the time. So that's the preview of my order. Once I go ahead, it gave me a payment link. So, okay, uh, moving forward, let me talk, take you to the most interesting part of uh, Robin Bot. Right now, I am in the takeaway category, and you know, I select uh, say a vegetarian meal that I want to have. It suggests me a few restaurants, and then I can select a restaurant where I like to eat from. Right? So, suppose I say burger now. Uh, so now the human agent part comes into picture where you know all of my details that you know what restaurant I selected and what do I want etc would go to the go to a live agent and a live agent would be there to help me out 
uh, with the payment and with the order he might recommend good stuff to me right so um, that's how it goes so this is front tap uh basically uh you know which is like a ticketing system or you could say a support uh, system where uh, you know users could uh, the agent could the robin agent uh, the, the robin team could come and chat uh, with people with the users and uh, you know play specific commands so like you see the agent sees uh, exactly you know where is the user coming from on the right side of the screen you can see that right he is interested in purchasing from sunny side vegetarian etc etc and then he is looking for a burger and then the agent can continue the conversation from there so the agent uh, the user gets it here and then they can continue with the conversation the agent recommends something which is seems interesting to the user okay now i'll take a stop here and explain so there are these simple commands uh, where uh, uh, you know which we have provided to the robin team so robin team can place orders or you know give payment commands to users and these they also you know make an entry into their records or analytics or uh, you know wherever so uh, this is how it looks like so suppose this agent posts this command saying okay uh, so so the agent uh, the user gets the link for the payment he goes there and you can make the payment so this is this is where we've done the stripe integration so uh this is how uh the robin bot looks like uh just to give you a quick summary uh robin is available on their website and android and ios apps and on the facebook messenger page of robin assistant uh, we saw this that it's it offers concierge services and it's complemented complemented by a live human agent uh, which is which means basically a hybrid approach because uh, you know artificial intelligence combined with human intelligence gives the perfect mix to a uh, chatbot uh, i would say right and it automates end to end e-commerce cycle so uh, this is uh, you know this is about uh, robin assistant um i'd like to uh, you know call on my uh, uh, you know my friend and uh, ceo and founder of uh, robin uh, paul uh, hi paul hello divya uh, can you hear me yes i can hear you very clearly and uh, so i hope for everyone too um so paul uh so you know first of all you know i'd like to know i've always had this question and i'm sure a lot of people or a lot of smes out here would have this question uh how did you come up with this kind of uh, you know such an innovative idea of having conversational commerce like okay. it is this end to end yeah yeah so uh, i started to work on a business plan for my uh, personal assistant in 2016 and like everybody else i was going to build an app uh, and i thought that was uh, uh, the best way to do it but then i came across facebook messengers chatbot platform that was launched april 2016 and i realized that chatbot has all the functionalities like an app and a possibility to have a greater reach because you're already in the messenger environment and uh, also it is uh, less investment to build a chatbot than an app so for me it was very clear that uh, that's the way i should go and in 2016 uh, when i just said the word chatbot uh, people just said what uh, and um, i struggled to find uh, developers uh, that had the skills to to build it 
uh, so I was uh, searching around uh, mostly in Europe and uh, I came across one French company who who had this uh, uh, had been developing chatbots and uh, luckily I also came across uh, you and uh, Gupshop. And um, for me, uh, Gupshop was the perfect match uh, for us uh, because uh, they had the, the experience uh, to build what we wanted to do. And we worked in a, in a Jira project, uh, which uh, enabled us to, to advance uh, fast. So um, actually, um, uh, a bit coincident uh, that we, we came across uh, the chatbot and uh, no regrets uh, after that. Okay, great. Uh, and uh, Paul, uh, you know, if, do you face any kind of direct competition of Robin, uh, like any competitors around in Norway or Europe, for that matter, or, you know, just directly or uh, having the same idea of Robin or a similar one? So I think we are the first real conversational commerce in the Nordics. Uh, and. Uh, uh, we don't have any competitors uh, who do exactly what we're doing, and we're also the first one uh, having a conversation of commerce. Uh, that said, uh, in Europe, you have uh, many other players who has uh, concierge uh, delivery systems uh, uh, such as Globo, you have Postmates in the in the states and so on. Um, uh, however, these companies are still using the traditional uh app in order to, to provide the service so we are quite a pioneer uh on uh, on, on both uh, the the service the personal assistant and the, using the channel uh facebook messengers which, and uh, uh to to deliver uh, the chatbot service i see and otherwise, uh, you know, if it's not uh, just uh, direct competition, uh, how would you say, you know, how is the reception of chatbots in the Europe market uh, since you belong from there? So I still think we are in the early stage. Uh, and to also be honest, I thought the speed of chatbots uh, uh, would go faster, uh, hence all the advantages. Uh, but I feel like many companies, uh, they're still on the fence and, and, and still not searching to, um, to do the, to, to develop a chatbot yet. Uh, so this gives an opportunity for all of you guys attending this webinar. It's like, I strongly recommend you to, 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 to develop this because, uh, also in the media, it's like people in the media, they love to talk about uh, artificial intelligence and, and chatbots and so on. So uh, I think it's a, it's a good time of, uh, uh, of developing a chatbot uh, in, in all kind of markets. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Uh, thank you, Paul. Uh, uh, we'll obviously have a lot of lot more questions for you, uh, but okay. we will you know, uh, for the interest of time, I'll just move in quickly uh, to our second use case, uh, which is beauty ecology chatbot, right? So uh, beauty ecology chatbot uh, is, uh, beauty ecology is basically an organic salon uh, in US, based in US, and uh, it, it it's, it also acts as a personal assistant available on, on their website and messenger, uh, right? Uh, the power of uh, this uh, bot uh, essentially is that it automates appointment booking for the salon staff. And uh, apart from that, it has a lot of engaging stuff uh, like quiz and tips, etc. And also, uh, you know, it has a complimentary bot uh, that comes with it. Uh, which gives the salon owner, uh, you know, some insights and analytics, right? Uh, the highlight of uh, this uh, bot is uh, that it's it's integrated with Mind Body, uh, right? Using the Mind Body template of Gupshap, uh, and uh, so Mind Body is a salon and spa CRM, uh, and uh, uh, it helps you, you know, it helps salons uh, book appointments and manage their 
staff, etc. It does a lot of stuff. Uh, and for the front end, uh, it has this bot, uh, which which users can use to book appointments for them. All right. Uh, so I'll quickly show you how it looks like. So yeah, the beauty ecology bot. I am trying to show uh, you know the book appointment flow. That's the highlight of uh, the bot, right? Uh, once I say you know I, I want to book an appointment, it quickly you know jumps into this sort of slot filling. That, that's what we call it. Uh, you know, answering a few questions and you know level one, level two, etc. What are the dates? What is the time suitable? And what are, what is the specialist that you're looking for? So this all uh, you know uh, comes dynamically from the mind body account that the salon owner has set into. Uh, in this case, beauty ecology, right? So suppose I say, okay, I like to go ahead with it. I have to quickly fill up a form. And here's my appointment confirmed. Um, now there are other uh, features to it as well. Uh, like, you know, I could simply, uh, you know, check out tips and trends or, you know, an interesting, uh, interesting quiz like, you know, what haircut would suit you. I'll try that out later for myself too, uh, right? So you can try that out. And then there are trends and tips, uh, right? It's like it's like a whole um, edu educating the user um, about, you know, hairstyles and stuff, hair coloring, right? So you can give links and quick guides to the user so the user can make use of it. Uh, now, this is the complementary bot that uh, I was talking about. Now, MB admin bot, which means uh, the MB admin bot means uh, mind body uh, admin bot, which is basically for the uh, salon owner. Now, the salon owner can log into this bot and get to see what kind of appointments have come in, what is the schedule, how does it look like, and you know, you can check the sales, right? So you can see the appointments right here. And, you know, you can check sales. You know, you could divide it by day, time, etc. And again, this is integrated with MindBody and that's where it comes from. Uh, so this is what the beauty ecology bot looks like. Uh, I'd uh, like to call on uh, Cassandra, uh, who is the owner and the CEO of uh, Beauty Ecology Organic Salon. Uh, Cassandra, are you there? I am. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Very clearly. Great. Thank you for coming over. Happy to be uh, here. Yeah. So Cassandra, uh, you know, I, I'm sure uh, it, there's a good reception of chatbots in US uh, mainly, but you know, we'd like to hear the story, you know, from you. How how is it really uh, about chatbots? Absolutely. Well, I have to really, I really have to give credit to Gupshop because. When I first started researching um, chatbot technology, it's really, really well known in the funnel community here in the U.S. So a lot of people that do email funnels, things of that nature, they've kind of skipped to the, you know, kind of the, the up and coming thing being chatbots. So they've kind of tried to integrate what a funnel would be into chatbot te technology. And I started researching companies and I found an article with another Hair care line, and we have a, a product line that I um, custom formulate, which is signature to Beauty Ecology called Evoke. So when I had, you know, approached Gupshop, um, you know, I was kind of in this bind where here I have, you know, a brick and mortar as a service retailer, and then I've also got a product line. So what was so attractive about this this experience I went through is that I could find a, a hairstyle that I liked, a color that I already have to maintain. And 
to purchase the product within four to five clicks. And so to me, the you know, the less friction, the better opportunity for the sale, et cetera, et cetera. So really when I contacted Gupshop, we had to reverse engineer and we said, okay, if this is our end goal, we have a bot to bot technology, which you can gather and put these two together. Let's really focus on where the customer is right now and where the consumer needs to interact with the, with the business in which we fell on to um, the API with MindBody software. So that's really kind of where it started. And then we started up with a team who's been incredible to work with. And, you know, we just really worked through, for us, it's really creating value for our customer. So much like Paul, it's, it's where's the customer right now? And when I look at my customer behind the chair and I'm foiling them or haircutting them, they're on their phones and they're either dipping over to their text, maybe a quick email, but they're spending a lot of time on Facebook and they're scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. So when you've got a Facebook message, you know, you get that little notification. And it's one of those addictions I think everybody has on their phone. You've got to go and see what it is. So we're where the customer is. We're creating an experience for them, not only to make a quick appointment or at least to see when appointments are available, but it then gives me the opportunity to, whether it's 11 o'clock at night or first thing in the morning, say, hey, who's searching for an appointment? Even if they create some kind of, you know, they can't get the appointment to work or um, are going through an experience, I have an opportunity to quickly follow up with them and say, hey, were you able to book an appointment? How can I help you? And I either give them my text number if they want to just shoot me a text or reply right there. So it's easy. It's engaging. It creates a client experience. That's a value add. And it takes a lot of pressure off our, our end as far as texting and constant emailing. Mm -hmm. Great. And uh, are there any other salons uh, doing this? Not that I know of. I mean, there's there's um, a company, a couple companies trying to really kind of integrate into the space. Um, but there's there's really not any other salons that I've personally come across. And if they are, they're really not utilizing the technology to their full potential. So it's just kind of a sitting technology. It says, hi, hi, can I help you? But it doesn't have any kind of engagement. So most times, even whether it's, you know, our bot or another bot, what I'd experience is if there's no engagement or, or follow-up, it just kind of sits dead and, and it doesn't really use to your advantage. So no, not that I know of. I see. Okay. Uh, so I think uh, the ones uh, hearing this webinar might definitely uh, start with the idea now. Um, Absolutely. I'll, uh, yeah. I'll uh, again, uh, you know, uh, call on uh, Paul and, you know, I have a few questions for both of you now. So, uh, uh, Paul, uh, can you tell me, you know, I, I've always, uh, you know, uh, SMEs or rather even big companies struggle with the idea, you know, okay, after uh, after they make their board, they struggle with the idea, you know, now how do I market it? So, uh, you know, uh, Paul, do you have any inputs and how, how did you market it and what could the SMEs really do in that space? Uh, it's a good question because uh, it's not that easy because uh, Facebook Messenger is a new channel and for many people it is uh, more where you're talking to your friends and family and so on. So it's new for people. So what we did, we did uh, some focus group and asked uh, uh, random customers uh, uh, how it, what they think about uh, doing business on Facebook Messenger and, and from our studies they're all positive. And we have been uh, live now for uh, nine months, and we have had more than um, uh, 200 unique uh, customers, uh, more than 500 uh, uh, unique transactions. So we start to have a bit of history and, and feedback from our customers. Uh, so our experience is that people are, are positive to use Facebook Messenger uh, as a channel for uh, purchasing or uh, using the service. So um, we have used three channels in order to uh, get uh, to know the service. The first thing we did, we used the influencer uh, to contextualize uh, both the service and Facebook Messenger as a channel. Uh, so the blogger uh, used the service uh, in a setting that people could easily understand that it's easy to use the Facebook Messenger. Uh, and that worked very well. Uh, that was 
made it uh, to, to, to get uh, reach uh, the audience and so on. The second thing we've been doing in order to marketing our uh, marketing Robin is, is through social media, which is obvious, uh, mostly Instagram and Facebook and Facebook Messenger. Uh, we've been using carousels, videos, stories, campaigns, uh, and uh, obviously also targeting the right customers. And the, the benefit of using Instagram and Facebook and Messenger is that uh, when they have this ad or uh, that I think is, it looks interesting, you can click and then you enter the bot directly. Uh, because that's also the challenge with Facebook Messenger is that you don't have this environment such as App Store and Google Play where you just uh, search for the brand and you find the app. Uh, the discovery button in Facebook Messenger is still uh, considerably new. So oh. that's the advantage with social media that you, you get the click, you enter directly uh, to the service. Uh, mm -hmm. And the last thing we've been using is uh, editorial media uh, because uh, the media is hungry to, to see how AI can be used in, in real life. We, they're talking a lot about it, but uh, this is like a concrete example. Uh, where AI come into the pictures, and so we got some. Uh, we got an article in the Norwegian uh, Financial Times, and we've been also interviewed a few places. Uh, so this also draws attention and uh, makes the customer understand the benefit of uh, uh, of of our service and also uh, Facebook uh, Messenger as a channel. I see. And uh, Cassandra, what about you? Would you like to advise on, you know, how to market uh, your bot once you have it? Sure, absolutely. So all great points that Paul makes. I mean, those are, you know, really incredible assets to he's right. You know, it's direct engagement. You're hopping right on the app. Um, so for us, we again, leading and going back to engagement, uh, we really um, focus on conversation and we focus on being real and uh, current with our clients. So, you know, we, we make sure that we have hyperlinks. I send out at least one to two newsletters a week. There's always a hyperlink there to hop on the bot, make an appointment or go through an experience. Another great asset that Gupshot offers is that you've got, you know, you can either use the template, but you also have, you know, different engagement opportunities within Gupshot to send a campaign so what we do is we really believe in the omnipresent approach. So I'm sending an email newsletter. I'm also sending um, an email blast through the um, bot technology. I'm sending the email newsletter. I'm getting the post up on Instagram. And then I'm also putting it on our website. So really, we become kind of this all-encompassing brand that you're kind of getting used to, you're familiar with, and then creates a really easy engagement. So really, it's about familiarizing yourself with the engagement and the opportunity to engage with the bot. So that's mostly how we use it. And then right now we're just starting to get engaged with um, Facebook and uh, really starting to do different Facebook ads and doing different groups um, to to market it to more cold, cold audiences. I see. Uh, great. Uh, so uh, we have a question uh, from the audience uh, for uh, you, Paul. Uh, so uh, has GDPR really affected, uh, you know, uh, your business in Europe? If someone has asked for you. Yeah, of course, uh, we have uh, been doing some uh, development with you guys in order to make sure that we are uh, aligned with the, with the new regulations. So uh, we have some steps in order to get the consent uh, because the thing we have to be, uh, uh, we now need to collect the consent in order to uh, to send proactive messages. Uh, so we have made some models in order to, to get uh, this consent from, from the users. Uh, but uh, so far it's like, uh, it's not been hindering our business. It's going uh, as usual, but it's just that we have to uh, be more uh, getting the content uh, the right way. Okay, and uh, there's another question uh, for uh, Cassandra. Uh, so Cassandra, the user is asking that uh, have you really seen any difference in appointment bookings uh, 
after this chat chatbot? Yeah, we have actually. It's the differentiation between before just using mind body and now is that there was a really a huge opportunity cost that was lost to us because when we have the engagement with people engaging and trying to make an appointment, I think we all understand that we pay for convenience and we're always having changing schedules. So our engagement has gone up incredibly, but our also low entry point cost of booking the appointment has gone up because we're able to re-engage the client and then also keep them on our um, campaign blast to kind of keep them engaged and remind them that we're there. Um, so we've seen an increase and it's also been a great value to the company to be able to re-engage on customers loss that we would have never known about that weren't able to book the appointment or just didn't finish their completion of booking the appointment. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think there's another question from me. Uh, so the user asks that uh, do you have any tips on uh, creating a SME chatbot. Um, okay, so so uh, you know I, I yeah I have uh, uh, you know while developing bots uh, we always uh, try to make it uh, you know as simple as we can. Uh, rule number one, you know, start with introduction. Be clear what your chatbot can really do, and be clear with what your chatbot cannot do because obviously it's it's artificial intelligence it can, it's not human so it has its own limitations so always be clear with uh, by expecting the right expect by setting the right expectations to the user right so uh, as a uh, as a sme always look for you know the most common queries uh, that you get i would say uh, you know and try don't try to solve all answers but just train uh, your bot to solve the most common answers. That's where, you know, that's where uh, the major chunk, I would say 70% of the uh, queries would get resolved automatically, right? And just uh, go for a basic NLP layer, uh, right? You don't have to, you don't have to get conf uh, confused or get overwhelmed by all these terms like, a machine learning and artificial intelligence and whatnot, uh, right? Keep it simple. And last but not the least, if you think, uh, if if you know your business really requires a, a hybrid approach, uh, which I was talking about earlier, um, you know, a mix of artificial intelligence, which is a chatbot, uh, with some bit of a human agent in the background, uh, right? So that would uh, really, really, uh, I think it will help, uh, you know, make, it will help you make a good flow or a good use case uh, for the bot. Uh, yeah. So. So uh, there is uh, another user who has a question to uh, both of you. Uh, firstly, Paul, I, I'll, I'll, you know, I'll let you answer this. Uh, the question is, uh, did you go through all customer messages while developing a chatbot and uh, the question sequences? So uh, how we approach, we created a guided flow. So we draw a storyboard uh, uh, for how we could uh, reach to the sales. Uh, and as you also explained uh, uh, earlier on, it's like if the chatbot cannot provide the answer, he would be then looped into the to the human operator. I don't know if that's answering the question or. Uh, I see. And uh, Cassandra, should I repeat the question for you? Um, maybe you could rephrase the question differently for me, please. Okay. Uh, so uh, the user is uh, trying to understand if you know you had to go through uh, old. Uh, you must be having some sort of transcripts or chats with your old customers. Did you oh, refer? Yes. 
refer to those? Yes. Yeah, so I guess what I can speak into is how we set it up. Um, one of the reasons I saw chatbot really uh, a challenge for me and something that I really wanted to approach is because it got my my um, words per minute down. I like to say too much and I like to give too much information. So what I did is I went through a Excel spreadsheet and I would create a comment and then a couple yes or no's that the potential client would respond with and then bounce back and forth with every potential you know, question, whether they wanted to engage or not, whether they wanted to go forward or not, if they wanted to go back to menu. So we really have to think all the way through and really get into the shoes of your customer. You know, and going back to your comment with SME is uh, simple is better. And it really always comes back to the value of the customer. Where is the customer? Where do they need the help? And what will be of value to them? So when creating the conversation, you just really have to step into that, you know, persona and walk through it and, and what through their eyes, what they think would be valuable to them. Okay. Uh, and lastly, uh, you know, um, I'd like to ask both of you, uh, Cassandra, uh, do you have, as a thought leader in this uh, technology in your uh, respective vertical, uh, do you have any advice uh, for the SMEs out here? Yeah, I think just kind of um, echoing what you know I stated is keep it simple, find a platform that really works for you, and don't jump around. It, what it really, really takes is understanding the platform, working all the nuances out, and really leaning on the technology support. Um, for Dubshop for us is really, you know, I may want to veer off in an area they bring me back to, this is, this is where you need to stay, this is what's important, um, rely on the intelligence that you guys have, and then understanding where technology is going and not try to get too ahead, but just to stay with the consumer. So for SMEs, opportunity costs, the fact that you know there's an 80% engagement on Facebook and there is an opening an email, and you know being a value to, to the clients is really where I would say just start there. Okay. And uh, Paul, would you like to advise something to our attendees here? Uh, well, um, I think uh, Cassandra sent it well up, but I just strongly advise all of you to, to get started because it's important to get experience. So even you should just start very simple. Don't be afraid to launch it and have it out there um, because you need to get experience about how the dialogue with the customer is working and so on. And uh, because uh, for me, uh, I like like uh, for me, chatbot is like a step stone for what's coming next, which is the voice. Uh, and uh, all experience you get with chatbot is you can directly uh, move it forward to voice that will come uh, to be very big uh, in the near future. So uh, just get started. Uh, that's my advice. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. So uh, I just uh, conclude uh, the session here. Uh, so you know all the all the SMEs you know who have uh, spent a lot of effort and maybe a lot of uh, money also uh, you know on collecting more FB followers, uh, right? Uh, it's time to you know start uh, you know exploring this technology because chatbots uh, will help you uh, help your users or your customers solve uh, simple as well as uh, later on complex conversations too uh, because as the technology is advancing so you know you could start with simple forms and answering routine queries or you know starting some sim collecting some simple data right and uh, Mainly, you can do it yourself too, right? There are plenty of tools, not just Gupshap, but there are plenty of other tools available in the market, right? Uh, just like uh, the Gupshap's uh, Flowboard Builder, you don't need to code really anything, right? For a, for simple or even slightly complex flows, you can trust on it, or rather, you know, without even without uh, any integrations, you can get started. Uh, with a template a builder, if if you have a salon, uh, right? Uh, with with the mind body template, right? With your chatbot, you can educate your users, share uh, media. You can do broadcast campaigns uh, through uh, the Gupshap broadcast tool, right? You can grow your uh, 
chatbot users through grow tools available on gupshop right and then you can showcase your products and uh, uh, so smes uh, i think you guys can take a real competitive advantage here uh, because uh, 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 research says really that um, you know, millennial consumers uh, right this generation that's coming up it's consistently accepting chatbots and you know, really automation is the future so yeah let's go ahead with yeah, i mean automation is the future barring all black mirror episodes <laughs> but um, so i'd like to say that and that's where i'd like to end you know for any support you guys can write into support at gupshop.io uh, thank you everyone for coming in and a very uh, you know special thanks to cassandra and paul for joining us today tonight <laughs> thank you very much Divya, and um, the pleasure <laughs> okay thank you, thank you.